So this is the brand new Wacom Cintiq. Not to be confused with the Wacom Cintiq Pro. Mm -mm. And I'm just super excited to open this up and share it with you. And uh, oh, maybe I already did. <laughs> I have it all set up, so let's jump over to my computer and I can show you this thing in action. So here we are at my digital workstation. If you're looking for like a technical review that's gonna like talk about all the specs, you might wanna go elsewhere today. I just wanna have fun and draw and share with you what I've noticed about the tablet and things that you would need to know if you wanna buy it. But my favorite thing about digital art is that you have every single color, you know, available to you and you don't have to buy refills it's just all there so whatever you want to use you can do and then of course digital art is really cool because you have all those editing features where you can kind of fix mistakes at any stage of the process it just works really well with my workflow being able to fix mistakes at any point instead of having to really plan ahead at the beginning whenever i do a digital sketch or illustration i like to start with this just a basic pen so the hard round brush but i set it to set the size and the opacity to be adjusted by pen pressure so the harder i push the thicker and darker the line is and the lighter i push the thinner and the lighter the line is so that's how i like to do a sketch and i like to keep all of the details for later i just want to get like the idea of the pose out and make sure all the elements are the right size like this head is a little too small so I can actually make it a little bigger and I can move it around because it's, this is not traditional art <laughs> yes anyway, so this stage of the process is really about figuring out how I just want the character to look and you'll notice like for the eyes I'm just drawing sort of dots and the mouth is like a triangle I'm not putting a lot of detail into that because I don't want to get too attached to anything if I have to change it in the future and the more time you put into something the more the worst you're gonna feel when you have to like, you know, erase the whole thing. So I like to start very simple, make sure I like the idea before I put too much, you know, time and effort into it. Something I don't really like about Cintiq versus like other brands is that they have such a large frame that goes around the screen. Like I don't mind this size. I think this size is perfect, but the screen is like, you know, so small. And then imagine if that screen went all the way to like this edge, I'd have so much more drawing space and I, I, don't, I think it'd be a little bit cooler. But then again, I'm used to drawing my old tablet was six by nine. So like, you know, this big. So I'm used to be able to go from the center of Photoshop, moving my hand like this far and being able to reach these. So one of the things I had to get used to when I moved on to this or even the Huon that I was using for a while, it was, I realized how much time it takes me to go from here to way over there. Woo. Like it doesn't look very far to you, but it just feels so different for my like workflow. And I had to get used to that. That probably sounds really stupid. And you know, if you hear these clickety sounds, that's me using keyboard shortcuts, which are going to be very crucial if you're going to buy one of these things because it does not have any hotkeys, which I thought I always wanted hotkeys, but then I tried a tablet that had hotkeys and I just ended up going back to using a keyboard. So. I think it's more important to have a smaller tablet and be able to reach the keyboard for me personally, but you may feel differently. Anyway, I'm really excited about having this tablet because now I can show more of my digital process and I feel like make a more interesting video in that way. So I've got to keep practicing trying to get like the lighting proper. I don't know how this is working. I've tested it. I've filmed so many like just little short snippets with my camera trying to like test it with different aperture and you know different shutter speeds and things like that see what looks best but it's really kind of tricky it's a very um it's definitely an art photography and it's not one that i've practiced for very long so i'm gonna have to keep practicing with that and hopefully i'm gonna add that to my new year's resolutions it's still january i can do that <laughs> it's a little not quite art resolution i want to learn how to use my camera properly you know i mean it has a manual mode maybe i should figure it out <laughs> One thing I've noticed when it comes to me and my art is any little factor can completely change the way a drawing turns out. And I'm not even talking about specific lines. I'm saying if I have a camera <laughs> in a different spot and it's almost bumping my head, I just feel uncomfortable and my art is definitely feeling a little bit more stiff. And I don't know, I just feel, I'm not feeling I'm not loving this so I kind of want to start over and I'm usually pretty against starting over because I don't know it just feels kind of cruddy but uh, I kind of just want to try something else so I've kind of got an idea I want to draw a girl with those glasses but we might change the shape we got eyes got mouth and then I want her to have those little like 
space buns, space buns at the top, but then like long flowy hair. Not like Sailor Moon ponytails, but like actual, like it's a half up, half down sort of look. <laughs> kind of follow it. I'm trying to get the composition to not look boring. So the Cintiq is sort of their budget, more affordable version of the Cintiq Pro. So there are some things about it that, you know, aren't as good as the Cintiq Pro because you're obviously not paying as much for it. So there's actually a slight amount of parallaxing, but it's way better than any Huon I've ever tried. Like this actually feels like I'm drawing directly on the screen. I don't even have to look at the cursor do that. Get the purple exactly, get that green. Like I don't have to really think about it, which I love. Some of the hue ones, they're just like slightly off. So you kind of just have to pay attention. So yeah, this first stage of the drawing, I'm just trying to get all of the elements of her or the character that I'm drawing, you know, in the page. And then I can go in and start chiseling away at it. It'll look a little bit more detailed or the way that I see it in my head. But what we should do is probably flip the canvas here before I get too attached to it. I'm gonna image rotation, flip canvas horizontal. Just grab this and rotate that a little. And I feel like that looks a little bit better. I'm actually gonna duplicate that layer and then go in and start adding a little bit more details. Chisel away at this. Sometimes I'll just draw directly over top of it. Face. I can lower the opacity of the old layer because this is digital. I don't have to erase anything. Add a little shade under the chin. Do I like the layout of this head better? I might even pull that head down a bit. Space buns. I might actually raise that space bun a smidge. I don't like the layout of it. It's actually raining outside, which is part of the reasons it's so dark. So hopefully you can see. Every once in a while it just goes full pressure. Okay, it fixed itself. This used to happen with my old Wacom, but not to the extent that it happens to this that I've noticed. It definitely happens with this thing a lot more. And I've also noticed, I don't know if it'll happen, but I found like this one spot and it's really hard to like find, but I found this one spot that just goes full opacity every time. And I'm not entirely sure if it's just, I get really unlucky and whatever happens that makes it go full opacity always happens when I get to that area of the drawing, or if there's literally just like a dead pixel that makes it go full opacity when I hit it. So here I have the character's body kind of going to the right, but the hair going to the left. And I feel like it adds a little bit of uh, oomph to this drawing. I even rotate it a bit though. I'm kind of happy with the layout. I think this could be something fun to uh, continue drawing. And this is like the first layer and the second sketch layer. And we have basic our basic idea. Um, I usually put the clothes in the second sketch layer. So I should probably figure out what I want her to be wearing. I've been into scoop necks. Why don't we just give every character ever a scoop neck? Maybe some three-quarter length sleeves. A little high-waisted skirt. Do something like that. Oh, we could... I added this little element, this little slit element to her skirt. We could do something similar to the shirt. That'd make it more interesting. Like that, and then add those little, uh, Straps. Kind of like something I did recently with a art snacks box, I think. But that was for like the neckline. That was kind of interesting. I like just to take something really normal and then just add like the smallest little element to it that just makes it a little bit out of the ordinary, if that makes any sense. Anyway, yeah, I'm liking this. So I'm going to take all my layers. I'm going to group them, duplicate them, merge them. Um, hide the behind layer by clicking the little eyeball and lower the opacity of that. Flip the canvas again for good measure. Image, rotation, flip horizontal. So for line art, I always zoom way in. Okay, not that far. Maybe somewhere like here. Lower the opacity a ton so I can like almost barely see it. That same hard round brush, but I turn off the pressure sensitivity affecting the opacity. So now, it will always be full opacity. It will only get smaller when I draw lighter and bigger when I draw harder. Now I can zoom in on the face and start doing these eyeballs. So there we've got the head done. I'm using a size 35 brown brush if you're interested. <laughs> I'm definitely feeling a little bit more comfortable <laughs> with this camera angle as we go through. So hopefully this picture won't turn out too bad. Oh, one thing I've noticed when doing hair is I don't like to do like a hard line, like, oh, there's the hairline. I like to kind of just do little swoosh swoosh 
and then leave some spaces where there actually isn't a line. And then you can just color that in. And when you color it in, you'll see the differences between those two sections. And you won't have that harsh line that just, I don't know, I don't, I don't love it. So I've just stopped doing it. <laughs> Oh, well, something you'll notice, which is annoying when I do a speed paint, but I like to zoom in and zoom out and zoom in and zoom out and zoom in and zoom out a lot. And uh, that's so that you can like get a better view of what you're drawing. And then you like zoom back in and you like fix a little something and then you zoom out and you take it all in from a distance. And that's very important because if you spend a lot of time like looking at an ear and you draw like a super realistic ear and it looks perfect and you zoom out and it doesn't suit the rest of the drawing, it's no longer a perfect ear because, you know, the, the way it contrasts with everything else. So you really have to zoom in and zoom out and really take it in from a distance and see what everything's looking like. Let's draw these little uh, details. I'm actually gonna shrink the brush for this and push a little harder. Oh, did you see that? It went full opacity and that was not me. How's that look from a distance? Not too shabby. Do this other arm. Okay, that arm. Now that I've zoomed out, I'm noticing that this arm right here is much skinnier than that arm. And I want to adjust that. Oh, a cool thing about the Wacom is it actually has a little eraser on the other side. So you just flip it and it starts erasing. Flip it back over and it's a pen. Pretty cool. So once I've done with the liner, usually what I'll do is... Uh, remove the sketch layer. Here we have the line art. I'm actually kind of liking it. I like the uh, line variation that I got out of this one. So I might, if you want to download this line art and color it yourself, I'll have it available. <laughs> All right, so what I'll do to color is I'll take Magic Wand Tool and I'll select my line art layer, which I should probably name line art. And then what I like to do is just click outside of it. And if you get lots of these little marching ants is what I think they're called inside of your liner it means you haven't fully closed the liner and there's spaces where like if you were to pour water in this section it's getting into the liner so you can zoom in and just follow along the outside and fill in all those little edges so you're going to go around and look for anything where there's like an opening on the outside here you only need to go on the outside of the character. And then once you've gone around that whole thing, then you can click on the magic wand tool and it should select only the outside. Yeah, baby. Then I'll hit select inverse. So now I have the whole inside selected, but it's selected to the very edge of those pixels. And I don't want that. So I'm going to select modify contract by about three pixels, which the thing is up on the other monitor, but here contract by three pixels, hit okay. And now it's all shrunk. So if I zoom in, you should see that there's a line outside of the marching ant and a line inside the marching ant. And now I can color in here and it won't go outside of the line art. Pretty handy. So I'll make a new layer underneath the line art and just fill that in with a solid color like that. Now my normal process, what I'll do from here is I'll create a new layer above that basic color layer. And I will right click on that and uh, create a clipping mask. And what that will do is it creates this little arrow right here that you can see. Now anything I draw in here will stay within this shape. So if I grab like a different color and then I draw outside, it's only going to color where there's purple. Isn't that really cool? I know, I think it's cool. And I always tend to draw this color in the skin first. So I mean, why change things up now? I'll just go in and color anywhere that there's skin with a color and I'll probably and I usually change it later it's not really the color I'm going to stick with it just has to be different than the color that I used to color in the uh, pink color that way I can see where I'm drawing and you could probably plan your drawing so that you could use the paint bucket tool for all this but I don't <laughs> kind of enjoy the coloring part and then her hands as well. Now, because the clipping mask is only the size of the hands, I can actually just grab a huge brush and color that in like that. There you go, the skin is all colored in. And now I can actually use this image adjustment hue saturation tool. And I can just use these little sliders and like find the skin color that I'm looking for. Okay, and the next thing I usually do is color in the eyes. So we can just create a clipping mask above that and do the same thing, but use a different color, obviously. And this one, I always know what color I draw the eyes. I always draw them white, so <laughs> I don't have to worry about anything there. So you'll notice this little circle. There's a little circle that appears on the canvas, and that's the size of my brush. But my brush tip is very small. And when I draw, it's not the full size of that circle. But that's because of the pressure sensitivity 
of this tablet. So there we go. There we have our basic colors down. And what we can do actually is take all our color layers, put them into a group, duplicate them, merge that group, turn off the one that's beneath it. And we can actually use this color balance tool, which helps everything be more cohesive. So we can make like everything be a little bit more pink or everything be a little bit more green, you know, like that. Kind of like that better. So we're going to stick with that. For the hair, I'm just going to grab a selection, grab the hair. Oh, we have lighter for the sh shirt here, so that's not really going to work. Probably going to have to go darker. Let's grab that. Go darker. We can even change the hue a bit. Maybe go towards blue. And then grab this little gradient. Ooh. Let me try to go a little bit more blue. Don't hate that. So now I have some like basic gradients like just thrown on there and I can use them to shade. If I turn the pressure sensitivity to apply to opacity again, and then I can use the alt key, grab some colors and just pull down and kind of create strands here. It's a bit of a painty technique. You can grab colors from the bottom and pull them up and do them in different sh And there we have it. There we have some very simple shaded hair. If your hair feels a little flat still, even after adding some simple shading, you can actually go in, lock the transparent pixels of your line art, and then uh, pick a color that'll look good. And just draw over the line art and see if you like that. Ooh, I like it with the blue, actually. It's a little bit more subtle. I like to leave it straight black on the edges. Just personal preference. And then I like to make the eyebrows the same color as that. But sometimes I'll adjust that a little bit. And then for skin, the line art around the skin, I always change the line art around that just because I feel like it helps tone it down, make the character feel a little bit more alive. So I'll do that now. There we go. Now let's go in and add some shading to the face. I usually do that line art thing after I shade the face. So this was a bit of a mistake because sometimes when you shade the face, then there's areas that are darker and then you don't actually see the line art. And I like the line art to be a little bit more obvious unless I'm going for a very painterly look. Let's create a new layer for that. Just sort of shade it in. I'm gonna grab a soft round brush for this to add a little bit of blush, to like the nose and the cheekies. Add it wherever it looks like it needs it. Try to make the sh face look a little bit more dimensional, basically. I like to shade the upper lip and then shade underneath the lower lip. Unless I add like lipstick or something. And there's a little bit more something something to the face. It looks a little clay to me. Add a little bit of shading to the teeth because they look a little crazy. Right? And then we need to add some shading to the shirt. Uh oh. It just stopped working. What happened? Okay. It worked again. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I'm running a few programs, so. That might have something to do with us something. But there, add that to the list of things that have happened. Ha ha ha, look at that face. Is the skirt here. Kind of just want to make it look like leather, so I might add just like a streak shine like this. We can actually flip the canvas here. It's been a while since we've done that. Let's see how things look. Uh, I'm seeing some problems. Move that up a smidge, see how that looks. That's why I like digital art, because I can just fix it all in post, basically. And I also like to play with eyebrows and grab like the skin color and draw a couple lines in there, like it's skin showing through the eyebrows. And I just add some last minute details, basically. That's what I like to do. I'm just playing around with it, trying to make it look a little, you know, visually appealing. Even if it was just like a Doodle sketch Rooney. <laughs> Ooh, what if we duplicate that and add an outer glow? That's set to screen, enlargen it, make it like that green color. And these things will look like they're glowing. Is that kind of cool? Is that interesting? <laughs> that I'm kind of just doodling. <laughs> what do I? Something I like about just art in general is that there's no rules and you can just literally do whatever you want. And no one's gonna come out of nowhere and just tell you, don't do that. I mean, they could try, but probably not gonna work. Fun little digital drawing. 
So that was kind of like my process of creating a digital illustration. Um, I'll usually spend a little bit more time on it, but I'm just feeling so... <laughs> I don't know, it's a setup, it's something new. So yeah, that's uh, something that I came up with using the new Cintiq 16. Um, yeah, I think I covered everything I wanted to say about it. Like I'm annoyed about the extra room, but that's how all Wacom's kind of work. And then uh, I really like the new pen. And then you have the little holder with the little nibs inside, which is cute. I always liked that they had like a little case that you could keep your pen in like this, but you keep it on your desk, but like I'd always forget to put it in there. <laughs> this is kind of handy because now you can't lose the holder because this, you could lose this and then you didn't know where to put your pen. <laughs> but with this, you don't have that problem because it's always right on the side of the Cintiq, which is nice. I had a lot of fun. I used really bright, fun colors and now I'm kind of in a good mood. And now that I have this, I'd kind of like to do more digital videos in this sort of format, but I still need to work out like the camera angle and like getting it bright enough and trying to figure out what exposure and like shutter speed I need to get this to look good. So it's all going to be a learning experience and I'm looking forward to 2019 and make, I don't know, fun videos for you guys. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys for watching. If you're interested in checking out more about the Cintiq 16, which they provided to me um, to try out and test and share with you, um, and you want to learn all like the specs and stuff, I'll have a link in the description to their website and you can learn more about that if it's something you might be interested in. I used it as the base model, um, so I used the stand that came with the Cintiq. It only allows for a 19 degree angle. You can actually buy an adjustment stand, which they sent me, but <laughs> they told me it cost $79 for that thing. And I know as the cheapskate that I am, unless I'm buying a $60 coloring book, <laughs> I was not going to spend $80 on a stand for something. Um, if I was going to buy this. So I wanted to prove to you that you don't need it and you can still draw something. <laughs> um, I'll probably use it because I have it and it seems like a waste not to use it. But for the purpose of this video and like, I really wanted to not use it. But yeah, we'll see. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys all next week. And I hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye.